Good afternoon, everyone. News abounds. Antarctica's melting three times as fast as a decade ago. It's a full-fledged five-alarm climate emergency. Scary graphs with just downward descending ice. But wait a second. NASA study, mass gains of Antarctic ice sheet, European Space Agency, using satellites as well. And if you look at the real math, 99.989% of Antarctica is still there that didn't melt. They use gigantic numbers to try to scare. You know why? Because Antarctic sea ice extent is growing back to nearly the baseline from 1981 to 2010. And the scary articles across the mainstream media are trying to say, look at the sea level rise as this is going to cause by 2050 or so. But since the sea levels have been rising since 1850, pretty much in a steady fashion, uh, you need to see if this is natural variability. Because looking back at post-glacial sea level rise at the Younger Dryas era, oh, that's 120 meters. That's 360 feet of sea level. They're squabbling about millimeters, literally fractions of an inch. University of Alabama Huntsville temperature compared to the scary models presented by the IPCC. Notice where that is at about uh, 0.8. Let's bring it to today, May 2018. That's dropped to 0.18. So what's your favorite color of microgreen to grow? Red or green? See the full selection at trueleafmarket.com. You can find the Adapt 2030 link for True Leaf Market as well as all the links to tonight's very important Antarctic debate in the description box below. Now for the record, I am a huge fan of all things anomalous in Antarctica. I do believe it holds part of our past as a human civilization as well as where we're moving to with the rediscovered technologies in the future. Now this new contravesty of mainstream media pushing the narrative of Antarctic ice is melting three times as fast as a decade ago, they just dismissed all of the scientific data over the last 10 years from not only NOAA, but the Danish Meteorological Institute and the NSIDC. Because they themselves have now set a new gold standard for what their information is. You see these headlines, full-fledged five-alarm climate emergency. Remember, if you're not from the States, a five-alarm fire means you send every fire truck in the city to go extinguish. Now, the climate alarmists are trying to say the same exact thing about Antarctica. Charts here, Guardian, Antarctica is melting faster. Okay, let's disregard the last 10 years of satellite data from at least NASA, NOAA, NSIDC and just come up with these new figures, what, last week? Referencing exactly this. Now, this is where it seems like two heads are butting. Because the NASA studies show mass gains of Antarctic ice sheet greater than the losses. This is just a couple years ago, literally two years ago. Measured by radar altimeters on two European Space Agency remote sensing satellites. They measured elevations in eastern Antarctica and they're showing snow accumulation. This map here is showing the rates of mass change. This is up to 2008. We're going to continue into the future after this as well. So even back in 2007 and 8, Arctic ice was at an all-time low. They were talking about the world falling apart ice-wise, yet Antarctica was still gaining ice. You didn't hear much about that in 2007 and 8. And there's a bevy of articles from the ESA, which is the European Space Agency, and NASA, all talking about this exact same thing up to 2015 at the end, which brings us into 2016, which was less than two years ago. They're claiming that Antarctic ice is gaining. And now these same reports are saying over the last 10 years, it's been melting three times faster than normal. Well, which is it? So let's bring you up to some current data. Just this last week here, Antarctic sea ice extent. 
Well, if the ice is melting on the continent, which is the coldest part, then for sure the sea ice must be melting as well, right? So here we go, that blue line, that's this year. That's above last year's ice concentration. We're getting right back near the 1981 to 2010 average. Inconvenient truth. And we'll bring you over here to this chart as well from CMIS. Those dots are showing the sea ice concentrations for this year, 2018. And if you go right out to where it says June in the second week, you'll see that red dot. That's actually one standard deviation. So I'm kind of curious where all this melting is going on. So I thought, okay, perhaps there's just miscommunication and lexicon in the media. So let's look at mathematics because truly the most pure language anywhere in the universe would be mathematics. Antarctica is still doing just great. So after they added up all these scary numbers inside the media and looked at all the ice shelves across the continent, 99.989% of that continent did not melt its ice sheets away. So what's up with that has a detailed breakdown from David Middleton going through each area of Antarctica, East Antarctica, West, the peninsula, Ross Ice Shelf. Oh, by the way, there's underwater volcanic activity. So when they talk about ice sheets breaking off, that's from warmth under the water. And you know there's been a huge uptick globally of volcanic activity. It's happening there as well. So when you take a look at the mass gigatons, significance of 3 trillion metric tons melting. Now also I do want to reference here in that same article, there's some great comments at the bottom. But as this thing was being swapped between metric system and American inches feet system, the centimeter to inch and millimeter conversion was a bit off. So the article is actually 10 times less than what was stated in being a three inch sea rise level. It's actually three tenths of an inch. Goes to show you when we have two systems measuring across the planet. So in The Guardian, this is a mainstream news publication. Why are they respected across the planet for bringing at least some sort of narrative to the uh, forefront? Melting at record-breaking rate? Might need to fact check that a little bit. Because I'm going to bring you back here to a NASA study again. They were talking about it slowed through 2008 and then it continued slowing even through 2013 and then it slowed again and actually gained ice in 2015. There's an enormous amount of articles on what's up with that. I've linked that whole Antarctica page. There's over a hundred articles talking about the ice sat with all the data and numerical values so you can back check this and see what's going on. And coming back to June 15th, Jay Zawali putting the hammer down. NASA glaciologist says Antarctic is gaining ice, coming out directly against all the reports that were coming out in the mainstream media, of which were referenced earlier in the video. Washington Post, New York Times, Guardian, among others. But we have somebody working at NASA saying, whoa, 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 whoa. that's completely wrong what you're putting out there in the media. This from June 14th. Inconvenient, Antarctica's ice sheet may be more durable than we thought. Those are all available at WhatsApp with that. I encourage you to do some of your own research because they're all talking about sea levels rising to, I don't know, 2050, we're going to have to leave the coastlines. But you know what? When I was growing up, we were told the exact same thing. And when I was a teenager in high school and I was told, oh, the Arctic sea ice is melting, the Antarctic sea ice is melting, we're going to have to leave all the coasts by 2015 if we don't act right now. And we're still here and the sea level rise is just merely inches. Now they're saying, oh, it's going to be 2050 when this Antarctic ice sheet, oh, no, it'll be 2070 now. Let's take a look at the long-term trends here. Remember, we were coming out of the Dalton minimum, which is another grand solar minimum. From 1800, why did the temperature drop and the sea level drop from 1800 to 1850? Grand solar minimum. You can also predict that sea level is going to start decreasing too because we're going into another grand solar minimum. Now, whether we note it in this year or 10 or 20 years from now, they're going to see the same chart here. We are absolutely going to decrease in sea levels as the ice sheets start to expand during the grand solar minimum. But I digress. Back to 1850 on the chart here. Now, you can see a steady run up. 
Now this is way before we had any kind of real CO2 effects into the atmosphere, which I'll agree, they started around 1950 when we started to get a lot of particulates, coal burning, etc., into the environment, 1940s, 1950s. That's 100 years before. Now, why is the sea level rising 100 years before CO2 really had any impact on the environment? And if you want to talk about gargantuan sea level rise, Younger Dryas era, and I encourage you to look up Younger Dryas, Y-O-U-N-G-E-R-D-R-Y-A-S. This was a massive temperature swing of 10 degrees Celsius up and down. And when it came down 10 degrees, it happened in two to three years. When it came out, it happened just as quickly. I mean, what we've seen in temperature change on this planet dwarfs what we're experiencing right now. Case in point here. Look at Barbados. 120 meters, for those of you in the U.S., you got to multiply by three. That's 360 feet of sea level rise we've seen, and that is purely natural. There was no CO2 coming out of factories 12,000, 10,000, 8,000, 6,000 years ago. And you notice how it's plateaued since that point. You'll never find this chart in an IPCC report. I assure you, you will not. And let's talk about Hansen and all the IPCC models running here. Red line, five-year average. Uh, they missed the mark a little bit, I think. Deeper comparison to University of Huntsville, Alabama. This is Virgin 6 on their satellites uh, versus Hansen's 1988 runaway models. The red line. Now keep that in mind, that was the 2017 temperatures that are showing in the peak and then a little bit of drop off. I want to bring you to today's temperatures, actually May 2018, just about a month ago. It's a 0.18. So you realize that drop another half degree Celsius. So there's really a lot of questions that need to be asked about what this mainstream media is putting out versus what the scientific data is showing us. They're showing gains on Antarctica and ice sheet the Arctic ice starting to recover, not only in breadth, but also thickness. Greenland's gaining ice as well. And now we have our global temperatures dropping. All the meanwhile, we're going and descending into a grand solar minimum. So you can see how the media is in complete damage control to try to sway you away from any of this type of new information that people like myself are presenting. I wish you would do your own research. You know, that would be my greatest wish is for you to go backtrack all the links in the description box so you can truly see what's happening with our climate. We are in a pivot point of human history right now, something like 2,000 years ago, collapsing of the Roman Empire. We're right in that area because our crops are starting to be affected globally. And if you've noticed your food prices rising in the stores, it's just the beginning. Next year, by the time we get into 2020, 21, you might very well look back and say, hey, I heard this in a video one time that we're really starting to cool on the planet, but the mainstream media was pushing us into this warming narrative. I'm not the only one talking about this. There are so many other voices screaming in the wilderness, hey, we have a huge problem globally with our agriculture going into global cooling. Yet the mainstream media keeps pushing this warming narrative. It's got to stop. There needs to be accountability. That's what I really hope from this video is that you might write some of these editors or call them local media and say, hey, I have a fully different set of information and I want to know why you printed that story. Because what you printed seems to be completely diametrically opposite of what the new data shows for our temperatures and ice gains on both poles. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this kind of content, I also produce a weekly podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations. I'll be loading the next edition here with Peter Temple from World Cycles Institute, where he talks about the same exact thing. We're just revolving in cycles that repeat. Not exactly 100%, but the weather repeats enough to give us the same results out with agriculture.